Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here. So, welcome back to another screenplay. Sorry it's been so long. This is Green Lantern number 5, and Green Lantern number 4 came out August of 2014. So that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm going to try getting this started. Uh, I don't want to be too long with it. My previous recording of it was like half an hour, which I thought was way too long. So I'm definitely going to aim for as close to 10 minutes as possible. Um, definitely check out my other screenplays. If you guys want, there is a playlist called Hybris DC Cinematic Universe or DCCU. Um, but also, as video progresses, I'll have all of them kind of appear on the screen in order, like in their phases. So definitely check those out. Uh, most people have what, like, you know, they've told me they really did like these. Um, so most of them have been really well received, especially the Green Lantern ones themselves. So go check those out. The first three Green Lantern ones have how Jordan and Sinestra as a focus. And four onwards is John Stewart, even though this is only five, so really only four has had John Stewart and the previous Justice League. But go check them out, guys. Like um people see people did seem to really like them. So I'm gonna try wrapping them up. This is number twenty eight, I believe. So I'm pretty deep in there. And with all that said and done, let's get into it. I will give some kind of annotations as I say stuff, um, because I know it's been so long to help you guys understand the context of things. But for all intents and purposes, you may want to listen to the previous ones um, to understand the full context of what I'm saying. With all that said and done, let's get into it. So the movie starts with Jon Stewart patrolling, you know, Space Sector 2814 before receiving a call from Kilowog. Uh, Kilowog tells Jon he's Neon Oa, so Jon, you know, he opens up a, worm, a wormhole and he goes to Oa. Uh, when he arrives there, Kilowog is there with a few Guardians, and they begin going over Jon's accomplishments and accolades. Um, alongside his high performance level, since he's been a lantern uh, a few years ago and you know the guardians say he's been a worthy successor to hal jordan which was earth's first green lantern and you know after some more reflection john is told he's being promoted so he's going to be now essentially the equivalency of a lieutenant in the green lantern corps um what they have for that and part of his new responsibilities as this lieutenant will be basically he's in charge of a group of sectors instead of just one sector so he'll have to find a new Green Lantern for his sector in particular since he'll no longer be able to be that, basically. I mean, he can't lead a bunch of sectors and be the uh, Green Lantern for a certain sector at the same time. It's just too much. He you know, finds that out and basically the Guardians tell him that he has about a, a, at least a week to find a new, um, to nominate a new Lantern before the Guardians just get one themselves. Um, but they trust his judgment with the nomination. John Stewart basically goes back to Earth at this moment, uh, thinking in his head, you know, you know, people he knows who would be a good kind of lantern, particularly. And to give you some context, what happened with Hal Jordan, why he's no longer the Green Lantern, like basically Hal's origin is more or less the same in this universe, but he died fighting Darkseid because Hal ended up becoming Ion, which is basically the you know the the personification of willpower, um, in the DC universe. You know, you have you basically have all the willpower in the universe in you. And he was fighting Dark Side of the Anti Life Equation. And the Anti Life Equation is basically the opposite of willpower. So I had it that Hal Jordan, as Ion, sacrificed himself using all the willpower he had to destroy the Anti Life Equation and Dark Side. So that's basically, you know, how Hal Jordan, you know, died. And if you want to know more about that, check out my Justice League 2 screenplay. I think that's the one that has Dark Side. Yes, that is the one that's Dark Side. Yes, go check it out. Um, but back in Detroit, John enters the apartment. Where his roommate Kyle Rayner is. Uh, John, you know, he gets the idea, you know, Kyle would make a good Green Lantern. Kyle had helped him before when he was just becoming Green Lantern, uh, not only with making his own outfit design, but also with, you know, constructs. Because John was very kind of strict in his mind with what kind of constructs he would make. But, you know, Kyle as an artist really helped him branch out his designs and really branch out his imagination in regards to making different constructs. So John asks Kyle. Uh, Kyle says yes to it that he'll he'll you know he'll he'll give he'll give it his best shot basically, and John tells him he'll leave, they'll leave in about like a day or so, um so to get ready, uh so you know Kyle's just kind of chilling out, but Kyle does say he has to be back uh for Christmas because he promised his parents in Chicago he would go visit his family, so at this moment we go to El Paso Texas we transition, and local high school is just getting out for winter break. And we see a 17-year-old Jaime Reyes catching a ride with his friend Paco. So they talk about a Christmas party being thrown tonight. Jaime doesn't really want to go, but you know Paco's like, dude, Brenda, which is the girl he likes, will be there. 
you know, they got to go. Jaime can hit on Brenda, all that good stuff. And, like, they can, you know, do a under the mistletoe thing. So, Paco's really hyping it up. And, you know, Jaime's like, all right, fine, I'll go. But before we get ready and stuff like that, I got to get this I gotta get this gift from my grandma because I haven't gotten her a gift yet. So, Paco takes him to a nearby shop, a uh, collection shop, because that's the type of stuff his grandma is into. And uh, it says, I'll pick you up around 9 before driving off. So Jaime goes into this collection shop looking for something that looks cool, yet looks like it has some history to it. Because that's the type of stuff his grandma likes. Um, she likes hanging up stuff on the wall that, you know, looks like it's old, even if it may not be old. You know, just something that looks like it has history, looks like it has a, looks like it has a culture to it. So while, while looking around, he finds a scarab. And he asks about the scarab, and the, the clerk guy is kind of hyping up the scarab, saying, you know, all oh, it's been around for centuries, you know, it has connections to Aztecs, Mayans, whatever have you, even though it was found off the shore of the Gulf about a year ago. Um, but he's just, you know, hyping it up so he could obviously get a good sale. So Jaime's able to get it for about $30 before riding, you know, back home on a skateboard. Now with the gift for his grandma. And later that night, Paco, you know, they go to the party, but end up leaving because there's really nothing, you know, there for them. Uh, Brenda ended up not going, so they just kind of leave. Uh, when they, they decide, you know, I'd rather play video games and chill with you, bro, you know, than do this. But on the drive back, though, a drunk driver hits them. Their cars flipped, all that stuff. Paco is left unconscious. You know, Jaime's in a lot of pain. He's injured. And this activates a scarab. So the scarab basically bonds to Jaime and activates the scarab warrior transformation. And, uh, and with this form, you know, Jaime's wounds are healed. He's also able to move the car out of the way and fly Paco to a nearby emergency center before the Scarab communicates with Jaime, kind of freaking him out, telling him they need to leave. So the Scarab kind of takes control at this moment and flies him into space before they're stopped by Jon Stewart with the giant green hand basically saying to stop. So uh, Jon Stewart, you know, asks for the Scarab Warrior to identify himself, saying that if he doesn't in the next few seconds, he will be destroyed like, you know, his other Scarab Warrior brethren. And uh, Jaime begs him not to kill him, you know, saying he doesn't know what's going on. So they go back to Earth. Basically, Jaime explains the whole situation, what happened, you know, with him, you know, the shop, you know, the party, the accident, all that stuff. And uh, Jon's able to scan the armor during this time, getting a result that it is indeed one of the Scarab Warriors from, like, the Green Lantern 4 that got damaged by Jon himself, actually. But due to that internal damage that wasn't repaired this whole time, the scarab, a part of the scarab that fully controls its host, is damaged. So John tells him that um, the Green Lanterns basically work off of willpower, and you know Jaime kind of looks up to you know John Stewart. He kind of looks up to the Green Lanterns. He sees them as heroes, stuff like that. Obviously, because they are heroes, but he thinks they're really cool, and. You know, he, you know, they're, they're just talking, you know, he asked John about the Green Lantern Corps and how they kind of like work, like how he is a Green Lantern, like how does he do what he does? And he tells them that, you know, the main thing is mastering the emotion of willpower, like kind of courage. And he says, just like he as a Green Lantern and other Green Lanterns have to do that, so does Jaime, which really, you know, nails down with Jaime because basically if Jaime has the courage, if Jaime has the willpower, to control the scarab, to control his actions, he can, since the, you know the scarab is kind of damaged. So the scarab's function to just control its host isn't there anymore. Like it'll try persuading Jaime to do stuff, but it can't really make Jaime do stuff unless Jaime basically gives up all control to the scarab. At this moment, um, you know John flies Jaime back to you know Texas, stuff like that. Um, you know John checks on Paco, makes sure everything's good there at the hospital. Make sure all the bills are paid for ahead of time so, you know, his family doesn't have to worry about it. And he says he'll see Jaime tomorrow. So the next morning when Jaime wakes up, he thinks it's all kind of a dream. And, you know, he wakes up and when he goes to take a shower, he sees the scarab, which obviously freaks him out. So, you know, he's asking like, oh, my, oh, shit, like, what is this? All that stuff. And the scarab activates again, saying, you know, its name is Kaji Da, or not his name, but its serial number. Its serial name is Kaji Da. And, you know, it basically has a whole mental conversation with Jaime before downloading the history of the Reach Green Lantern Corps and basically, you know, basic information about the armor itself into Jaime's mind. So with this newfound knowledge, you know, Jaime 
you know, finally understands some more context of what Jon Stewart was saying. He also just kind of knows more in general about the armor. Um, and he kind of tries, you know, testing out different features of the armor. So he practices putting it on, taking it off. He practices making different, like, weapons in his hand. He doesn't fire anything, though. But he practices making different weapons with his hands, stuff like that. Also, he activates his wings, and he decides to fly around. So he does that for a while before Jon Stewart appears, um, you know, asking him if he's ready to be serious about this. Since he does have the Scarab, and the Scarab bonds to their host for life, um, basically he has two options, Jon says. He can be trained by the Green Lantern Corps, or the Scarab can be forcibly removed, which nobody really knows if that will kill Jaime, but it's, it'll have to be done for protection of the universe if Jaime does not des you know, decide to receive training. So Jaime obviously chooses the training route, deciding that's probably the smartest idea, and it is the smartest idea. So he goes with Jon Stewart to Oa, and alongside of them is Kyle Rayner, who obviously will be the new Green Lantern of the Sector. On Oa, the Guardians, um, although initially hesitant, allow Jon to train Jaime due to the benefits of having a Scarab Warrior on their side. I mean, besides getting more information on the Scarab Warriors, it's just, it'd be a nice, you know, thing to have. You know, a planet that instead of being taken over by a Scarab is protected by a Scarab. Uh, it'd be less of a headache, basically, for the Guardians. But their only rule is that while Jaime is on Oa, he must be watched by at least one Guardian at all times, just in case anything were to go wrong. They're doing that, and they train for, like, a few days. But in Oa time, it's, like, a few weeks, because they train in a special area on Oa, called like the training center and the training center has different fields and different fields have different forms of time manipulation that the guardians do which basically is how they train their lanterns nowadays with all the information all the experience they need it, they're able to ship out a new lantern in like a day or two basically if that makes any sense um so Jaime and all of them are able to return around what is like Christmas Eve time and they've had like essentially the equivalent of like four months of training um, by Jon Stewart and Kilowog and all of them. So if a director was making a movie, I would definitely flesh out and show all that training. But for the purposes of just going over the story, I'm not really going to. I would hate for it just to be a montage, but most directors would probably just do that because they're lazy. But I mean, comment below with what you guys would like to see and what type of training do you think uh, Jon made Kyle and uh, made Jaime go through? So... At this point, um, they go back to Earth, and while in El Paso, uh, Jaime is hanging out with Paco before they see a satellite crash. Now, the Scarab tells Jaime that it's not really a satellite, that's a Scarab warrior coming to basically kill them. Because when their armor activated, when Kajida activated, um, it automatically sent a signal to the Reach. However, when it sent the signal, it sent its data alongside the signal, and the Reach were able to determine that the Scarab was defunct. So because the Scarab is defunct, they decide to send another Scarab to basically destroy Kajida and then finish Kajida's mission of invading Earth, essentially. Jaime contacts John and Kyle immediately to let them know about this, and I'm going to call this other Scarab Red, because it's a blood red Scarab, blood red and black Scarab, it's in the thumbnail. I imagine it with like the body of the Black Beetle from, not from Ray Shrummer, but the body of Black Beetle from Young Justice, but like red. And red and black instead of just like black and gray. So the Red Scarab, you know, kind of scans the area before finding Jaime and immediately goes to attack him. Um, Jaime is able to put Paco somewhere safe before the Scarab arrives and kind of activate the armor and they start fighting. So this is really cool because I see them using like the Scarab's different forms. So the Scarab, if you don't know, has like an attack mode, a speed mode, a defense mode, stuff like that. And I see them while they're fighting, they're going to these different modes. So it'd be really cool to see having a creative director really know how to utilize those. Um, probably a director wouldn't know anything about that, but it would be cool to see nevertheless. And they do that for a while before Jaime gets overwhelmed by the other Scarab's, you know, vast, you know, better use of the armor. And gets shot with a cannon blast, Point Blake, which really kind of dazes Jaime. And before Jaime can get shot Point Blank again in the face with a cannon blast, Jon Stewart arrives. And uh, Jon Stewart 
Blast the Scarab Warrior, and uh, John, Jaime, and Kyle basically 3v1 the Red Scarab Warrior. And this would be really interesting. You could really have the Red Scarab Warrior take on the position of a very experienced Scarab Warrior that really shows the full potential of what they can do. I would love to see a director really take that and explore that. You know, have the Scarab Warrior, although he's evil, have the Scarab Warrior really use the full capabilities, offensive and defensive capabilities of the Scarab Armor. I mean, the different modes it has, different weapons it can make, all that stuff. Really give Jon Stewart, Kyle, and Jaime a run for their money, basically. Um, but obviously, eventually, you know, they 3v1 overpower the Scarab. And Jon Stewart kind of finishes off the fight by using a huge blast of willpower uh, to the point where not only it does it disintegrate the Scarab Warrior, but it makes essentially a man-made lake behind the Scarab Warrior, or where the Scarab Warrior was. At this point, Jon kind of flies off, filing a report with the Guardians on the situation, while Jaime returns to his family for Christmas dinner, and Kyle goes to Chicago to visit his family. Jon, uh, however, once he goes to Oa and he fills a report, He's informed by Kilowog that this is a blatant, you know, disregard for the truce that was made a few years back with the Reach after they tried invading Earth before. So John, uh, with Kilowog, with the Guardian's blessing, go to the Reach's home planet before uh, basically proceeding to single-handedly destroy every inch of Scarab manufacturing, Scarab processes, all that stuff on the home planet alongside arresting several members of the Reach further violation of the truce by sending that red and black scarab warrior to earth uh and then i have the film ending with you know everyone kind of relaxing for the you know the christmas dinner alongside you know also john in his apartment in detroit finally getting some nice re need rest that's the end of it i mean after scene credits would be a blue ring and a purple ring flying towards earth am i setting up white lantern i don't know am i setting up carol ferris uh you know the sapphires i don't know but comment below what you guys' thoughts. I did kind of skim some details I had written down because I wanted to keep this shorter than 30 minutes, definitely. So if you want some, you know, larger exploration of a certain part, just comment below. And uh, without further ado, hope you guys liked it. Sorry I did kind of rush it a bit. I just didn't want it to be too long. And without further ado, I'll see you guys later.